in dealing with debt, the Fed effect on your credit. We have Greg McBride, the Senior Vice President and Chief Industry Analyst at Bankrate.com at the ready. Hello, Greg, and the Fed has signaled to the market that tapering will happen in November. What can consumers do to stay ahead of those rising interest rates? I think the single biggest and most impactful step, refinance your mortgage if you haven't already done so. Mortgage rates are still lower now than they were at any time before August of 2020. But when we look out over the next, say, six to 12 months, the combination of an improving economy, elevated inflation, and now a less accommodative Fed, all of that is suggestive of higher rather than lower mortgage rates. So I think that's the step to take right now. What are you expecting from the banks? You're not really going to see material changes in interest rates on other products like car loans and home equity loans. Uh, And the reason being is that while the Federal Reserve is tapering their bond purchases, they're not yet raising benchmark short-term interest rates. That's going to happen sometime down the road. Until that happens or until we get closer to it, you're really not going to see material changes in rates on a lot of these other consumer products. Those rates are going to stay very low, very conducive to borrowing. What about credit card companies? Credit card rates are not gonna move up in earnest until the Federal Reserve starts boosting short-term rates. So in all reality, we're probably looking at sometime in the second half of next year at the very earliest before they start to move. So you've got some runway to pay down or pay off that high cost debt once and for all, take advantage of those 0% balance transfer offers, do what you can to throw extra money against that high cost debt and get it knocked out while rates are still low before they start to move higher. Thank you, as always, Greg. Thank you very much, Andy. Go to businessfirstam.com for where to see our show on TV.